Welcome to this video in which we talk about one of the important fundamental concepts associated with AC steady state analysis, in particular amplitudes and phases of cosine waveforms. Uh, this is important for the following reason. If I have a linear circuit and the independent source or the independent sources uh, in that linear circuit are sinusoidal, then all of the voltages and all of the currents in the circuit will be sinusoidal as well with the same frequency as the independent source. The things that change on these signs in all of the, uh, the voltages and currents are the amplitudes and phase. And so it's important that we understand uh, what amplitude and phase are and that we begin to understand the relationships between amplitude and phase of current and voltage in uh, the components and as, as well as what happens to amplitude and phase in a real circuit. So that's what we're actually going to do in this video is uh, spend a bit of time talking about amplitude and phase and then look at the relationships between amplitude and phase for resistors, capacitors, inductors and then finish up with a simple RC circuit. So in this first slide or picture you can see that I've graphed a cosine 4 pi t and I've graphed the 3 cosine 4 pi t. Uh, the 4 pi here in both instances gives the frequency and in this case it's two cycles per second. Uh, you can see here I start at this point I have one cycle, two cycles in one second. Uh, that's because I can write this 4 pi as 2 pi times 2. So this is the frequency in cycles per second. 4 pi is the frequency in radians per second. You'll notice that the red signal has a 3 in front of it relative to the blue signal, which means that the amplitude of the red signal, in this case we're looking at peak amplitude, is three times the peak amplitude of the blue signal. And in fact this is true everywhere. The amplitude of the red signal is three times the amplitude of the blue signal. Okay, so this gives you an understanding of amplitude. A uh, positive value here stretches the cosine waveform vertically. Okay, so um, that's amplitude. Let's look at phase. Okay, we have here uh, what I've called leading phase, and I'll explain in just a minute why we call it leading phase. The blue signal represents a cosine 4 pi t. Again, this is a cosine that has a frequency of two cycles per second. The red signal is the same, except I've added in this pi over 2 and this pi over 2 you can see has shifted the peak of the red signal so that it is a quarter of a cycle behind the peak of the blue signal okay in in this graph I should point out that on this graph that the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is the amplitude of the signal okay so on the graph it's shown as um, as the, the red peak occurs behind the blue peak but this is not the way we talk about it in engineering. The idea is if I look at the time that the red peak occurs bring that down here it's say close to 0 0.03 seconds. If I look at the time that the blue peak occurs, which is here, it's uh, what, 0 0.05 seconds? And so things on the red signal, so for example this peak on the red signal hap happens in time before this peak on the blue signal. And so because this is the case, when we're talking about this in an engineering context, we say that the red leads the, the red signal leads the blue signal. And that's a consequence of the fact that this phase angle here is positive. Okay. So 
Um, that's an example of leading phase. Uh, one last comment. This phase difference, or this phase value of pi over 2, this is expressed in radians. Quite often, we'll express the phase angle in degrees. So a phase angle of pi over 2 is equivalent to a phase angle of 90 degrees. Okay. Um, I find degrees more meaningful than radians uh, because I've been working with degrees all my life and radians I've only been working with for the last 30 years of my life. Um, it turns out for most of the computational packages, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, you'll need to do your uh, phase values in uh, radians. So for example, with these plots that I made, uh, I had to tell the plotting software that uh, red was 4 pi t plus pi over 2 rather than 4 pi t plus 90 degrees. Okay, so that's an example of leading phase. Okay, this is an example of lagging phase. Um, again, we've plotted the cosine 4 pi t in blue, and then in red, we've plotted the same signal, except the phase is negative 2 pi over 3. And so you can see that this has the effect of shifting the peak in blue to the right by 2 pi over 3. We call this a lagging uh, phase because, for example, this peak that occurs in the blue signal at time 0 doesn't occur in the red signal until time um, 1 point or point 0.1667 seconds. Okay, so that's why we say that this that the red phase lags the blue phase. Okay, this is also a, uh, another way of thinking about it is that the phase angle is negative. Now, a phase angle of minus 2 pi over 3 is equivalent to minus 120 degrees. Um, for those of you that have never uh, done this conversion before, uh, you take negative 2 pi over 3 and multiply it by 180 degrees over pi. Oops, over pi. And if you do that correctly, you get negative 120. But this is the factor that converts from radians to degrees. Okay, so that's an example of lagging phase. Well, let's now look at the current voltage relationships of uh, different circuit components. First is a resistor. And in this case, I've drawn the voltage in red and the current in blue. And if my resistance is 2 ohms, then the voltage is twice as large as the current. Uh, you'll notice that there's no phase change. Both the voltage and the current are in phase, which means that they have their peaks and their zero crossings and such at the same time. So resistors don't change phase, they change amplitude. Well, that was easy, right? Okay, let's look at a capacitor. Uh, here, the relationship between current and voltage in a capacitor is... Uh, the current is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. So if I say that I have a voltage of 4 volts times cosine 4 pi t and take its derivative and do the math, I basically get this guy. And uh, so I plotted these two. You'll notice that... Um, the derivative is still a sinusoid. In this case, it's a sine, but a sine is just a shifted cosine. So you can see that I've got this shift here. It turns out that I can write this as 2.01 amps 
cosine 4 pi t plus pi over 2. Okay, so taking the derivative of a cosine gives us a negative sine, which is essentially just a shifted cosine. Okay, it's shifted by 4 pi over, or by pi over 2. So, um, if I look at this then, I can say that the current leads the voltage or that um, the voltage lags the current. And again, this is a consequence of where the peaks occur. Um, peaks in current occur at earlier times than the corresponding peaks in the voltage. Okay, so this is the voltage-current relationships between a capacitor. Again, current and voltage are the phase difference is pi over 2, and I can actually, again, write this as 90 degrees. Typically, you'll hear people say that uh, the voltage and current in a capacitor are 90 degrees out of phase, which means that the phase difference is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's a capacitor. Let's look at an inductor. Okay, the um, relationship between voltage and current in an inductor is given by this. The current is the integral of the voltage. So in this case, if I have a voltage that looks like this, my current will be the integral of that voltage, which ends up looking like this. Okay, and if you look at the graph, I have a peak here and a peak here. You can see in this case that the voltage leads the current in the sense that the peak on the voltage occurs earlier in time than the peak on the current. Um, and it, so what we can say then is that I of t is 1.99 amps cosine 4 pi t plus pi over 2. No, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. That should be minus pi over 2. Let's correct that immediately. Okay minus pi over 2. And because uh, the phase shift here is negative, that says the current lags the voltage. Uh, again, you can also see it graphically. So we can write then that I of t lags V of t. Okay, again, for an inductor, the current and the voltage are 90 degrees out of phase with each other, but they're uh, the opposite uh, phase angle as with a capacitor. Okay, let's quickly look at one more idea, and then we'll quit. This is an RC circuit, a resistor and a capacitor in series. The source voltage is um, given by 4 volts cosine 4 pi t, and when I solve for the capacitor voltage, which you'll learn how to do in subsequent videos, I get that it's um, given by the expression in red. You'll notice that the phase angle is minus 45.1 degrees, which means that the capacitor voltage lags the source voltage. And it lags it by 45 degrees, or you could also write this as uh, negative pi over 4. Okay, so hopefully this is helpful in setting up the fundamental concepts. Uh, again, these are very important when you're doing AC steady state analysis because all of your voltages and currents are going to be cosines with the same frequency but different amplitudes and phases. So with that, we'll end this video.